You can. I feel the anointing of the Holy Ghost. I need the anointing. The Holy Ghost just changed my mind. Glory to God. If you have your Bibles, turn to turn to 1 Peter chapter 5. And the title of the message is called Hold Fast. Hold fast to your election of faith. Hold fast to the truth. Hold fast to what God has given you today. God's getting ready to change your heart. God's getting ready to change your mind. He's getting ready to break you loose today. Yes. To loose you from the to loose you from the burden of this world and the cares of life. To loose you from the from the from the flesh and the law of sin and death. To break you loose from the authority of the world today, so that you so that you can make, be free. Because Jesus said, "Him that the Lord makes free is free indeed." He told me, he said, tell them to hold fast. Be settled in your truth today. Be settled in the strength and the glory of God today. Be settled in the fact that God's word is true. Let every man be a liar, but God can't lie. God will always be on your side. He will always tell the truth. And, he, and, and when he tells the truth, the truth will always go forth and it will not come back void. It will make you free. And that's why he says in the word right here, 1 Peter 5, he says, 1 Peter 5, he says, resist him. Verse 9, 1 Peter 5, resist him. Be steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are being experienced by the brotherhood in all the world. Everybody's going through something right now. Everybody's facing difficult times. Everybody's facing a trying time. Everybody's facing the... the the, the shortness of the flesh and even the cares of life are even abounding over you right now. You feel overwhelmed. You feel at times that, that you just can't take another step. But I'm here to tell you that you just hold on because the word is coming, Evelyn. The word is coming, Marilyn. I mean, the, I got your mom on my, your grandma on my mind this morning. The word is coming, Marilyn. The, the, the Bible says in Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 4, it says, it says 1 Peter 5. Verse 9. It says, write the vision down. Write it plain. Write it on the, make it plain. Write it on the tables of their hearts. So that when it comes to them, when they receive it. See, that's the whole thing. you got to receive God's promise for you today, Aggie. you got to receive God's word. you got to receive the fact that God wants you to be blessed. Going in and blessed coming out, Wayne. That God wants you to be lifted up. Actually, let me run. Okay, First Peter chapter 5, verse 9. But you got to be stiff. You got to hold fast. You got to hold fast to the truth, knowing that what God puts together in you, nobody can put asunder. That God wants God to. You got to set, make your election sure. What does that mean? That means you got to make up your mind, y'all, that you're what? That you're going to go all the way. That you're going to go. That you're not going to lay. That you're not going to give up. You're not going to lay down. It doesn't matter how many times. How many times? The world seems to lay things against you. It doesn't matter how many times you... You know, it doesn't matter how many times you fall. What matters is how many times you get back up and you, and, you, and you proclaim the name of the Lord again. That the name of the Lord is a strong tower. And the righteous, you and I, that we, were, we can run to it and we're safe in the arms of the Lord. You've got to believe that, 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 that God can make a way where there is no way. Every How many times? Every time. Whoso, what does the Bible say? Whosoever what? Shall call upon the name of the Lord. What does it say? They shall be saved. How many times? Ken, how many times have you called upon the Lord and you were saved? Every time I needed Him. Every time I needed the authority of God in my life. Every time I needed the glory of the Lord to surround me. God established me in His throne and He set me on a rock. He gave me a promise. He, Jesus said, who am I? He told Peter, he said, you are the, he said, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. As long as I got to show you an image here in just a minute. As long as you've got that image of Christ on the inside of you, as long as you can still see the glory of God abounding in you, it says, upon this rock, you're going to stand and the gates of hell shall not prevail against you. It doesn't matter about the prevailing winds, y'all. It doesn't matter how many times you go. I told my wife about that this morning, about some of my loved ones. Doesn't matter how many times they go underwater. Listen, don't give up. Don't quit. It doesn't matter if it seems like the waves are crashing around you. Isaiah 43 says this. I'll never forget this when God said this 20 years ago. He said, I have called you by name. He knows your name, y'all. And your mind. Your mind. Did you know every time you call upon the name of the Lord, Isaiah talks about it. 
The Bible says that your name is engraved on the palms of his hands. And so when you call upon the Lord, you know what happens, y'all? Your name pops up in front of God. <laughs> pops up in front of God. And God sees your name. And, he begins, and immediately he begins not only to intercede, he, he, begins, he begins to speak authority. He begins to speak power over you. He begins to speak relief over on you. He begins to speak his word over you. So that what? So that he can lift you up. So that he can lift you up where? Out of the angry waves. What's that song we used to sing? The love lifted me. I was sinking. How does that go? I was sinking deep within. Far from the peaceful shore. Very deeply stained within. Never to rise no more. more. Listen to that. But the master, the master, the overcomer of the sea. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry. From the waters lifted me, now saved am I. Love lifted yeah. me. Love lifted, listen to me, lifted me when nothing else could help. Love lifted me, love lifted me, love lifted me, when nothing else could help, love lifted me. <laughs> Glory to God. I feel the anointing of God. I see that's God's love. Don't you ever don't you ever think that God's not in love with you this morning? Don't you ever think that God is not on your side this morning? You know, the Bible said you were fearfully and wonderfully made how? In the image of God. If God could, took time to make you in His image, you better believe He did so that, so that He could share His love with you. So that He could share His so He could share His emotion with you. So that He could walk with you and talk with you and be with you and, and, and establish your heart in Him. So that so that you could you could be strong how? Be strong in the Lord and the power of His might. That you could truly say with inside your heart what, what, what Paul said in Ephesians 3.20. He said, I know that my God can do what? Do exceed. And you got to believe this. you got to see the image of God inside of you. That my God can do exceeding and abundantly and above and beyond. you gotta, you got to believe, you, you gotta believe that God is above and beyond God, y'all. That He can do above and beyond what? Anything that I can what? Think or anything that comes to my mind or I can ask or think. The only reason why you ain't got it going on right now because you have not or because you ask not. Ask, and it shall be given. Seek, and you shall find. And knock, and it shall be opened unto you. See, God just wants you to have today. What's God's will? I was going somewhere else today, but God took me. God said, no, I'm going to take you right over. He said, just trust me. Just open your mouth again. I feel it. He said, he, 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 see, God wants you. What's God's will, y'all? To be just like him. God's will is you to have the same authority. You say, how do you know that? Because it says that. It says that. It says that in it, that Ephesians. Let me see if I can find that for y'all. It says that in Ephesians 3. I got brought my old, I brought my old sword today, Kenneth. That new one, I can't flip through it, man. It's, I got to get it broke in a little bit. This thing's about 18 years old. I can flip through this, boy. Glory to God. Look what it has been chewed up. My, my dog got a hold of him one time when he was a puppy. But it says right here. It says right here in, in Ephesians 3, that Ephesians 3, starting at verse 16, that God would grant you how? God, you think God doesn't want you to be happy? God doesn't want you to be wealthy? God doesn't want you to, to walk and have the fullness of yourself, the fullness of his glory in your life? That you actually have all the excerpts of God? This is, this is Ephesians 3, verses 16 through 20. That God doesn't want you to have everything that you need in order to what? To be able to acknowledge him. That's what, that's what Solomon said. I'm trying to get you past something today. I'm trying to show you. The, the, reason why you I'm going to show you. the reason why you go through some of the suffering today, because it's not because God wants to see you struggle. It's because God wants to see you loosed. <laughs> Did you hear me? God wants to see you loosed today. From what? From the indwelling sinful nature of the flesh. He wants you to see you loosed from the... How many masters can you have, Jenny, at one time? One. Either your master's going to be righteousness or your master's going to be sin. You can't, you can't have it one or the other. Now, I'm not saying, listen to me now. Y'all don't look down and you look up. I'm not saying you're sinning. I'm not saying you even desire to sin. What I'm telling you is, is there's an enemy inside of it that you that, that you got to know that God wants to get rid of in your life. That God wants to loose you from. So you can be free. So you can actually, you actually literally divorce yourself from him. 
I like one of the songs we do in here. I can't remember what it's called. Um, but uh, but in that song, in that song the, 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 uh, the minister of music, even in that song, says, you have no obligation to sin anymore if you don't want to. Did you know you can live righteous if you don't want to? Did you know that that's exactly what Jesus is talking about in John chapter 8 when he says, him that the Lord makes free is free indeed. He's not just talking about free from the world and free from the attacks of the world. Who's your worst enemy? He's right there on the inside of you trying to beat you up, trying to bring you down all the time, isn't he? Trying to cast you down, trying to make you feel like that you ain't worth, you're not worth two cents. That you feel like all the time, that you, that you, every time, you feel like every time you take three steps of faith going forward, you feel like you take ten back. Well, you need to be loose from him. You have no obligation to him any longer. That's why. Jesus, but you know what? You can't do it in yourself, can you? You can't, you can't lose yourself. That's why Jesus did it for you. That's what it says in, 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 in Ephesians. Come on, Holy Ghost. Romans chapter 6, verse 11. Everybody, you got to decree this in your life. You know, I declare it every day. You know what a decree is? I mean, you make a stand. Remember, I this? Stand. Stand. Hold your ground. Hold your ground. Make a stand. He said, decree this. Jesus, Jesus did it before us. Declare. Romans chapter 6, verse 11. Decree a thing in yourself. Speak a thing out. You gotta, if you want something to happen in your life, you want to, to go, then you got to speak the word, let it go forth. It says in there, declare thyself what? I declare myself dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. And when I declare that, and when I declare that, it's as if I'm dead to it. It no longer, it no longer exists in my life. Let me ask you a question. If I said, I say to my son Kenneth, because that's, that's okay, but he knows it doesn't mean anything. If I said to you, son, if I said, Kenneth, as far as, and we got, a, we got in a heated argument or something, I hope God forbid that would ever happen. But if we ever, if we ever, I'd be right and he'd be wrong. Y'all just always remember that. <laughs> If we ever got into an argument, I said, Kid, as far as I'm concerned, Kid, you are dead to me. What does that mean when you say that to somebody? It means they don't exist to you, don't it? Did you know that you have the right to say that about sin? You can say that. I'm not, I'm not talking about sin itself. I'm talking about the sinful nature of man. I was trying to figure out how God wanted me to go about this today. But you can say to yourself, you can say to that indwelling sinful nature of flesh, you're dead to me. As far as, I, as, far as, I, as far as you and I are concerned with each other, you don't exist any longer. You don't, and, and, and 1, John, 1 John chapter 2 says this. John says this. He said, I write to you that you what? That you would not sin. He didn't say you would never make a mistake. He did because if you do, he said you have what? You got an advocate with the Father. But he makes a statement. He said, I write to you, would not. He said, he said that you would not sin. In other words, you don't have to if you don't want to. Once you realize, once you make an adjustment in your life, once you realize who you're a slave to, and once you make, once you make that desire, once you make that assumption in your life, then you can hold your ground. Did you know that? Once you know, you know, what's what's this really all about, Ken? And what it's really all about is who are you in love with? Who are you more in love with? It only comes down to two people. You or God. That's all it comes down to. Who are you more in love with? You or God. Now look at that. I'm going to show you. I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna, let me flip over. You don't have to turn there. I'll just do it for you. Romans 6. Let me show you something. This is what he says. Let me show you something. What does this say right here, Marilyn? What does that say in my title right here, folks? Chapter 6. Right? Dead to sin, alive to God. Dead to sin, alive to God. See, I didn't say all that. Dead to God. The Holy Ghost said it. Look what he said. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace abounds? You don't have to. Verse 1. He, you know what he says? He says, certainly not. Listen to this. How shall we who died to sin live in it any longer? If you die to something and, you're, and, and it doesn't exist in your life, how can you follow it any longer? You can't. That's what Jesus meant in John chapter 8. When he said in there, when he said, when he told that the followers, he said, if you follow me, he said, and you, and, you, and you heed to my word, then him that the Lord makes free is free indeed. You know what they said? They said, we're not under bondage. Yes, you are. They said, we've never been under bondage. Yes, you have. He said, Who, whosoever is a slave to sin, it, or whosoever continually sins, commits sin, it, it, it makes it a habit. Who, you, when you got born again, when you got born again, you became what? 2 Corinthians 5 17. What happened to you? You became a new creation. He literally transformed you and changed you and made you into the exact image and the exact likeness. If I say the exact, 
the exact likeness of himself. They that are in Christ are a new creation. What happened? Old things passed away. Everything passed away. The old self passed away. Now, it didn't. I'm going to show you next week. I'm, in the next couple weeks, I'm, if y'all keep coming back, I'm going to show you. It didn't die all the way. It was just wounded. It, it's just like that old, now I'll repeat this again, Wayne. It's just like that old mildew wall, ain't it? You can take that mildew wall and you can get 90% of it. But if you've got 10% of the corner you can't reach, it's not whether or not that mildew is going to come back, is it? It's how much it's going to come back and how big, right? Yes. So, what, the, see, God's salvation plan was not just about, just about dying on the cross for you alone. It, that's the initial evidence. That's the initial act of sanctification, but there's a progressive act of sanctification. In order for me to take care of that mildew wall, I have to build a back door, don't I? I got to put a back door because every once in a while I got to go back up in there and do what? I got to bleach it out again, don't I, Wayne, so that it don't, don't cover the wall, right? I got to go back. I got I to have some form of what? Preventative maintenance. I got to have some form of preventative maintenance. I'm just telling you right now, you're just going through a little preventative maintenance right now. Do you hear me? God just, he's just maintaining you. Why? Because you, because, because you got this body that you that you're fighting against. You're redeemed. That's what it says in Romans chapter eight, verse twenty-three. It says, "Those who are the first fruit of the spirit." That means redeemed. They groan. Why are you groaning? Why are you groaning all the time? Why do you feel overwhelmed? Because you need to lay aside what Paul says in Hebrews twelve: lay aside every what every, the weight. The weight of what? Every weight and the sin. It didn't say you're sinning. It says the sin. The sinful nature. Lay aside that weight of the sinful nature. Get it off of you. Lay it off. Shuck it aside. Paul says in Hebrews, I mean Romans 12, it says cast off the works of darkness and put on the armor of light so you can walk in the light even as he is light. The first act, the first act of, of, of salvation, the first thing that you admit to yourself is, is who you're a slave to. Who do you trust in? That's what Jesus was saying in that John 8. He said, who do you trust in? He said, he said, a, he said a slave, a, when you first get born again, he said a slave can enter, into, can enter into the father's house for a little while, but he can't stay. In other words, I'll let you come in. When you get, I'll let you come in, and I'll work with you, and I'll work on you, and I'll begin to strip away that old man, Marilyn. I'll begin to remove the axe of that flesh. I'll begin to loose you from it. You, you, yeah. The things you're bound by, and when I expose them, y'all listen. When I expose them through the Holy Spirit, you gotta agree with me. You gotta agree with me. Isn't that what the word says? For if two are, if two agree on what, anyone, anything, any one thing touching, they can do what on earth they can ask what they will, and it shall be done. If you agree with the Holy Spirit, I ain't got nobody else around me. Man, I just lay hands on myself, y'all. If you just agree with the Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, I, I agree. I need your help. I need you to shake. I need you to shake the flesh off and the fire on me. I need you to help me to lay aside this weight, this thing that is what besetting me. What does the word beset mean? It means setback. You feel set back all the time. You take three steps forward in the glory of God. You see something happen in your life. You see a you see a miracle, a sign, and a wonder. But all of a sudden, you take ten steps back and say, "Man." Who said that to me? You did. Somebody this morning. You said, man, if, if, every time I turn around, something's happening, ain't it? Something's happening. I, I don't need any more setbacks. My wife said, I wish I'd have told you to told him that second part I'm going to tell, tell you today. He who sets his hand to the plow and takes his hand off of it, what does it say? They're not fit for the kingdom of God. You know why you need to keep your hand on the plow and you keep moving forward? You know why? The Ephraim is the Ephraim is a, Ephraim the, the tri, Ephraim is a sign of God being in control. Okay, Ephraim is the ox. Ephraim, God's the one that pulls us forward. The Holy Ghost is the one that anoints us, that keeps driving us. That's what's on the inside of you. That's that driving force on the inside of you. That's why it says right here. I'm just skipping around a little bit, y'all. I'm, I'm just moving in the spirit. That's why it says right here in in, in, in Ephesians three sixteen that He would grant you according to the riches. Of his glory to be how? To be strengthened with all might by the Spirit in your inner man. So you need the Holy Ghost to strengthen you with all might every day. So you can rise up in the name of Jesus and take a hold of the horns of the altar. Take hold of the throne. Take hold of the take hold of the, the plow. And it doesn't matter how tough it's getting. Don't look back. Keep moving. Just, just keep, keep praising God. Keep magnifying God. That's what Judah's the one. 
Ephraim pulls the plow. God pulls you through it. But Judah praises. So you let the Holy Ghost an unction of praise out of you. Unction an anointing out of you. See, because you don't want to be a slave. I almost left that out there in the Holy Ghost. He said, he said a slave cannot abide in the Father's house forever in John 8. But a son and a daughter can abide forever. You're a son and a daughter of God. So you've got to grab a hold of the plow. And when you feel like you just can't make it and you prayed every prayer you know to pray and the walls seem like brass, just start praising Him. Just holy God. Glory to God. Hallelujah, God. We're going to make it all the way through this thing. And all of a sudden, you, you, you and, then you, and, then, and then you break the clod. It says, Jacob breaketh the clod in Hosea 10. Well, how do you break a clod? The only way you break it is get on your knees. Just get on your knees and start praising God. Grab a hold of the horns of the altar. Grab a hold of the plow. And don't let go till what? Till you get to the other side. You know why you don't, you know why you don't look back? Because when you play, if you look back, what happens to the fur on the road, David? It'll be a mess up, it'll get crooked, it'll go all over the place. But if you take it and you go all the way to the end, don't worry about your harvest, it's coming. Don't worry about the word of God. That's why Holy Ghost said, He said, hold fast. Don't worry about it. Let God speak the word. Let a word go forth and not come back void. He said, He said, Hosea, I mean, excuse me, Lord. Habakkuk 2 said, Write the vision down, write it plain, write it on the tables of their heart, and let them do it. Let them run with it. Let them walk with it. So that though it tarries, wait for it. How? I'm getting there. I'm going to see you, Marilyn. It, though it tarries, what did it say? Wait for it. Why? Because when it comes, it'll speak for itself. And what do you mean, Ken? What do you mean the word will speak for itself? If, you, if you're obedient to God and you hold on to the plow, according to Hosea 10, it's around verse 12 through 14, he said, hold on to the plow. When you get to the other end of the when you get to the other end of the field, what are you going to do? You're going to turn back around and come down the other side and start plowing. You're going to see your harvest when you get on the other side. You're going to see your results when you get to the other side. God ain't going to leave you. He ain't, he's not going to leave you uh, empty. He's not going to leave you motionless or unblessed. He's going to let you see the glory when you get to the other side. So, but, so you got to let, but you got to, but along the way, while you've been struggling, while you're going through difficult times, you got to, you got to hold, you got to be steadfast. You gotta hold fast. You gotta let the whole, you know, and the only way you can do so, I'm skipping around, I know, but you gotta do what Ephesians 3 said. Do what? Let the Holy Ghost, let him, let, let, let God grant you, let God grant you peace, let God grant you rest, that according to his riches and glory, that, that what? That you might be strengthened in your inner man through the Holy Ghost. And then the next verse says this: that Christ may what? Why do you need the Holy Ghost to strengthen you so that you can overcome the flesh? So that you can go back and read that down the road in, 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 in uh, Romans chapter 6. It starts around verse 15. It says, whomever you set yourself a slave to be, you are a slave to whomever you present yourself to be. Whether it be under sinful nature or whether it be under righteousness. But if you present yourself under righteousness, you're no longer a slave to sin. You know why? Because you know what you get in return? It says because your blessing is the, is the holiness of God through the Holy Ghost. See, God will anoint you with his, with his what? With his riches and glory, with his spiritual gifts in heavenly places. He'll anoint you with, the, with, the, with, the, with his holiness. And tr holiness and true righteousness, what? Leads us to the perfection of God. Leads us to the authority of God. Leads us to what? If, if we have all of God's characteristics and all of God's authority and all of God's anointing inside of us, guess what? Then we can overcome. So he says, that Christ may dwell richly in your hearts, verse 17. Through what? Through faith. Through your. Through what? That thou art the Christ. The, through faith. The Son of the living God. And upon this rock. I'm going to keep standing. I'm going to keep holding fast. Upon this rock I stand. And what? I got to believe. If I keep. If I keep holding fast. If I don't quit. If I don't let go. If I keep chugging. You know God can handle your flaws. He can handle your weaknesses. He can handle your shortcomings. He can handle all. He can handle when you fall down. You know what? Well, you know what he can't handle, Kenneth? When you give up or quit on him. As long as you don't quit, I always remember my old story about the two frogs in the cream. As long as you don't quit, as long as you don't give up, God will make a way. Those two frogs in the cream, and they, and they, 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 couldn't, get, they couldn't hop out of the bowl, y'all. It was, it, was, it was too deep. It was too deep. They kept kicking and kicking. And one of them said, you know what? We ain't going to make it. We ain't going to make it. We're just, we're just going to drown. And you know what? I just might as well give it. And one of them said, they're just going to drown. I might as well just give up. And he did. He drowned and he drowned in the creek. But the other one said, you know what? I ain't going out like that. That ain't going to happen to me. I'm going to keep on no matter what. I'm going to kick, 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 kick it. He kept kicking. 
He kept kicking, he kept kicking, he kept kicking. All of a sudden, that old cream started, started getting hard underneath. His feet started turning into butter. Started churning, buddy. That thing started rising up, rising up. Next thing you know, he could see the top of the bowl. He hopped on out and went on. Long as you don't quit, long as you don't give up, you're going to hop on out and you're going to move on. It may seem like the water's over your head, but if you don't quit and you don't let go and you don't and you don't and you don't you, you don't give up, you don't give up on the Lord, and you keep singing that in one of my favorite scriptures, Nehemiah 10, the joy of the Lord is my strength. I need strength today, don't I? We need strength today, don't we? The joy of the Lord is my strength. If I fit, if I do this in my life, I got it in there in my bath, and my wife found it, she found it painted on something. And she got, I think, got out of Hobby Lobby. See, if I make, what's, what do you mean, joy of the Lord is my strength? If I work every day in my life, I ain't making God happy. And that's what I, that's, that's what I set out to do. Is all I, I can't make everybody else happy, but I try to make God happy. If I make God happy, and all of a sudden I get joy out of making God happy, and, and, and God is pleased with me, that's what contentment is. When He's pleased with you, and you're pleased with Him, and I get, and, and we both content with each other. Guess what? Not only did I get his joy, but you know what I get in the midst of all? I get his strength, too. I get his strength. I, I, get, I get the power of the Holy Ghost rising up inside. That's what he's talking about here. So when you experience that love and you experience that power and you experience that authority in your life, then it says, why does God, why does God want you to, why does, he said that Christ may what? That, Christ, that I get that image of God on the inside of me. That Christ may dwell richly in our hearts through what? Through faith. That we may what be rooted and grounded in love. Whose love? His love. When I get rooted and grounded in the love of God, then you know what I when I when I when I when I when I, when I there's a song we used to sing in, in, in Riverdale. When I think of His glory and what He's done for me, I just want I just want to jump, 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 jump. When I think of His good things and what He's done for me, I just want to jump, jump, jump. I just want to jump in the glory of God. I'm talking about imagining. An image of God. I'm going I'm to take you to another spot real fast. I'm going to close. Imagining the image of God. That why, does he, why, does, why does God want to be rooted and grounded in His love? Verse 18. That we may be able to comprehend. God wants you to understand something. That you may be, be able to comprehend this. That God loves you. Watch me. Look at me. Look at me. Don't look. Hey, don't, don't be. Why so? David said, why so downcast, O thy soul? Why? What did he say? He talk, sometimes you've got to talk to yourself, don't you? Why so downcast, oh thy soul? He, what did he tell himself? He said, put thy hope in God. Well, quit looking at everything else around you. Quit looking at the circumstances. Quit, look, I don't, it, quit looking at what you, are, what you went through yesterday. Cast off the works of darkness and put on the armor of light and, do, and, and just make a new day. You see, if God does something new every morning, doesn't he, Wayne? I may fall, down off the, I might fall off the red carpet every once in a while, but every, but every time I get up, Every time I get up, you know what? I become stronger, don't I? Every time I get up in the Lord, I become stronger in the Lord. The power is mine. Every time I take, every time I take a step forward in God, then I, then I, then I, you know what I've done? I become, I do what that verse 7, 18 says. Verse, not, not, excuse me, that verse 17. I become rooted and grounded in Christ. Every time I take a step forward, I become more rooted. I become more grounded. I become more steadfast. Immovable. I'm already, already back to that first Peter 5. I become unshakable. It, everything's happening. Everything you and I go through is happening to the same brotherhood all over the earth. I'm not going to tell you the second thing. I'm not going to. I'm, I'm going to leave that for another time, another sermon. I'm not going to tell you the two things why the same things keep happening all the time. I'm going to save that. But but everybody's going through the same thing. But you know what? If I just keep getting up, if I just keep getting up, I become rooted and grounded in God. I become rooted and ground. I become rooted and grounded. Now let me show you something here if I can find it. Real. Then he said. But then he says, Why does God want you to keep coming? So that you may know the length, comprehend what the, the with all the saints, what is the width, the length, and the height, the depth of God, the love of Christ, which passes all knowledge, so that you may what? So that, why does God take you through all these things? Oh, I didn't know I was going to read this today, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Verse, verse 19, look at this. To know the love of Christ, which passes all knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God and the God. That, that's why God's shaking all the flesh loose from you. That's why he's. That's why he's breaking it down. That's why he's. That's why he's loosening you from your enemy, so that one. So when when every action has what, an equal and opposite reaction. Once once you get loose from something, once once something is removed from you, something else is going to be what. It's going to replace it, take its place. It even says that in in uh, Hebrews twelve verse eleven. 
It says that it says for chastening for a moment is not joyous. But what? Rather painful. Nobody likes to get their rear high at 10, do they? It's not joyous to go through difficult times, is it? It says it says it says it is it, it says it's, it said it's not joyous for the moment, but it's painful. But you know what? Listen to the everybody say afterwards. But afterwards, here's your harvest, here's your, here's the plow. It's hard to plow the ground, ain't it? Y'all come back and get these scriptures later, Hebrews 12, 11. But afterwards, you know what it says? It says it yields. That means, that means a harvest. It yields peaceable fruits to those who are trained by it. Do you realize you don't wake up and be... When you get born again, y'all, you don't wake up and you're fully righteous. You're righteous. But you're not fully righteous. You're not, you're not fully mature in the Lord. You've got to be what? You've got to be trained in it. You've got to be trained in righteousness. Just like a kid can be trained to do wrong, you got to train them in right. You train up a child in the ways of the Lord, and when they grow old, they will not depart. Right? They got You got to be trained in righteousness. Why? Because you were born into. Because you were born into sin. Jesus wasn't. Bible says, but he, but he made himself go away through the exact same things as us. That's why it says, "Him who knew no sin was made to be sin, so that what? So that he, he was done the opposite." Y'all listening to me? He was, every action has an equal and an opposite reaction. He was without sin. So the, he who knew no sin had to be made sin so that what? So that you and I, I said, look to somebody besides that, you and I. So that you and I could become the righteousness of God. How? In Christ Jesus. It's not a one-time event. It happens over and over and over. Every step you take, you become glorious in the eye of Christ. Every step you take, you become more like him. Every step you take, every, every step you take, right here in Ephesians, I'm going to go right on over here to Ephesians 4. Look what it says right here in Ephesians 4, verse 13. Um, Ephesians 4, 13. It says, Till we all come to the unity of faith and the knowledge of the Son of God. Every time you get changed, you, you get a greater knowledge of who Jesus is in your life. Do you understand that? Every time you become more righteous, you understand his righteousness and holiness inside of you. And you know what you're able to, you know what it does to you? It strengthens David, your inner man, so that you can do what? So that you can hold fast. You can't, you can't hold fast nothing if you've never been tried tested, can you, can it? If you ain't, if you've never had to endure anything, I said that last week in John, in James chapter 1, verse 12. It says, He it says, He who has endured temptation, and after you have been approved, when you go through it and you get approval from God, yeah, you got to get his approval. When you get approved, then it says after you get approved, then you then, then he or she shall receive a crown of righteousness, right righteousness, which is held for them. So you got to go through something. So he says in verse thirteen, when you come to the not, you got to in order to know about somebody, you got you got to go through everything that Jesus went through. The steps of a righteous person are what ordered by God, and he what, and delights in his ways. You got to walk through the same path that Jesus walked through. He walked through the valley of the shadow of death. You got to follow him. That's what this whole thing is about. It's fought. It, they, the, it actually says that in their Romans 6. They that have been baptized in Christ in life are also baptized him into their death, into his death. You follow him into death so that your natural man can die. So that when your natural man dies, then you can then, you, then, then he can do what? He can renew you with what? With his spiritual characteristics. He can you, renew you with, with his divine nature. That's what it says in 2 Peter 1 4. That, that they said we receive exceeding great precious promises. What? That by these, through these, we can be, everybody say, I'm a partaker. See, you're a partaker. We can be a partaker that's of his divine nature. That nature, uh, your trend, that divine nature helps you do what? Helps you escape the corruption of the lust in the world thereof. When, when God, God's going to take something away, but he's going to replace it with his glory. He's going to replace it with his holiness. He's going to replace it with his righteousness. And I'm going to say this in close. I'm going to say this in close. Well, I didn't know you finished that verse 13. So he says in there that we come to, to the knowledge of the Son of God. How? That you might be a perfect man or a perfect woman to the measure and the stature of the fullness of Christ. You're supposed to be reaching the fullness of Christ. Let me, you, let me tell y'all something. One of the worst things I hate when I ride down the road and I see this church. And it, and it's, it's an oxymoron. My wife used to hate when I say that. But she, she heard some other people say it. She says, she says oh, they talk like can. He said, you know what oxymoron means? It means it's impossible. It cannot be that way. It says, it's, it's, the sign on the church says this. No perfect people welcome only Christians. That's impossible. That's an oxymoron. It's impossible. 
You're either, you're either a slave to righteousness, you're either a son and daughter of God, or, or you're a sinner. You can't, be a, just, you can't continue to, to be a sinner saved by grace. You're a, that's a made-up made doctrine. You're either a son and daughter of God, or you're still a slave to the world, slave to sin. And his desire is that you what? And I'm just reading the word, y'all. I'm not, I'm not, I'm, I'm not, this is not thus saith him, this is thus saith the Lord. He says in that Ephesians 4, right there in verse 13, that you may be a perfect man or a perfect woman, that you reach the full, the measure and the stature of the fullness of Christ. Now let me, let me read one more scripture and I'm done. Glory to God, I had to follow you the way you wanted me to go today, Holy Ghost. Scared me there a little bit. I, I said I scared a little bit there, Holy Ghost, but, he, but I went on and followed him anyway. <laughs> you know, I, I just have to do, Marilyn, what God says, tells me to do in all that time. Sometimes I go, oh. you feel like, you, you know, your Adam's elbow just went down and you tell me you're something like that. But then you just step back. Marilyn said, how long is that water going to be in the glass right I don't know. Until, until the whole, I've had that thing sitting out there for weeks and preached that sermon until God says, because you know what God told me to give y'all, until he says that I give them everything they need. You gotta be, you gotta, what does the word say? You've got to be instant in. Instant in season and out of season. You've got to be ready to. He said, preach the word. Preach the word. Preach the word. Be, 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 preach the word will, will be without fear or favor of man. Preach the holy word. So this little, listen to this. It says, living before God our Father. Here's how you're supposed to do it. What am I, what am I doing y'all right now? I'm girding up the loins of your mind. I'm, I'm, I'm strengthening you. I'm building you up in your most holy faith. That's what it says. Jude says this. Pray in the spirit. That you might be built up in your most holy faith. And what, you know what it says in the end? A lot of people don't read it. So that you won't fall out of love with God. It's all about love. So that you won't fall out of love with God. See, God has to keep strengthening you and keep taking you through the fire and taking you through circumstances so that you can endure. So that you can endure. Those that endure to the end, the same shall be what? And me out, y'all. I'll say it with me. The same shall be saved. It's not a it's not a it's not a race to fleet it's not a fleet footed race it's a race of endurance. Paul says in in the book of Romans I think it's the fourth chapter he said he said he said everybody y'all all want a prize don't you everybody likes to win a prize everybody likes to win something don't they he said everybody runs a race and they run it for a prize they run it for a reason he said he said there's even a prize of in heaven he said but I run the race he said I run the race that, that and, and and I fight a good fight I don't do some I'm not somebody. I'm not somebody that just beat at the air. In other words, sometimes you got to... Do you ever feel yourself doing that? Y'all punching yourself in your own gut, in your own stuff, punching your own flesh, telling you to get away, that how much you, it just, you just detest it? Paul even says that in Romans 7. He detested it. But, but, but here's what Peter says. Therefore, gird up the loins of your mind. Verse, 1 Peter 1, 13. Therefore, gird up the loins of your... I'll never forget when I found this. And be sober. Y'all ready to rest? Y'all ready to rest? He said, gird up the loins of your mind. Be sober. How do you sober yourself up? You realize you've got to let God change you. You realize you, when, when you come to realization, you, you, you can't let that old man keep living in your life. You can't let him live in your life. You've got you to let, you let go of him, and you've got to let God be God on the inside of you. And, and then when he scatters your enemies, then you'll be free. So he says, be sober and rest your hope out. Rest your hope fully upon the grace that is brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. When you first came to the cross of Calvary, and all of a sudden you you were free, you were free from sin. All of your sins were forgiven. Everything was washed away. It was cast as far from the east to the west. And you, for the first time in your life, you felt what? You felt holy. You felt clean. Though my sins are scarlet, they are as white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they are white as wool. You felt clean. You felt forgiven. You felt released. You felt free, and you had what? You had an image. You had an image, Aggie, of Christ on the inside of you, and how He appeared to you, and how He appeared inside of you as well. You saw this holiness of God surrounding you, and 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 you and, and you said inside of you, nothing can take His place. But what happens is, what happens about? I call it the cocoon theory. About six to eight months in, into it, that old guy shows back up again. He was wounded. He wasn't destroyed. He was wounded. And, but he shows back up, and all of a sudden, you got two people on the inside of you, don't you? Yes. What did Joshua say? What do you got to do? Choose you this day what? Who are you going to serve? you got to make up your mind every day you get up, which one are you going to serve? And once you decide who you're going to serve, the other one becomes its servant. <gasps> Y'all didn't hear me. Once you make up your mind that you become a servant of the Lord, your, 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 your flesh no longer can, can have rule over you, but you become its, it becomes your servant. I could tell you all a story about that, too. 
when the children, when Adam and Eve wanted to be God, when they wanted to be God, y'all, when they wanted to be God, they, they got a God. They, when, they, when, they, when they turned against, who became their God? Does anybody know? Their flesh became their God. They, they, became, they became their God. And you, had, you say, how can you prove that, Ken? How can you prove that, that man's flesh became his God when he fell in the garden? Because it says it. In, in, in John, and y'all go read Romans chapter 6. That'll tell you the whole story. It says in Romans 6.10, it says, do not, let, do not obey your flesh, your flesh that it will have rule over you, or that it will have reign over you, that it will cause you. How does that go, Holy Ghost? Let me, let me, let me find it real fast. Do not obey your flesh that it will have. Here it is. Romans 6, 6, oh, there, 6, 12. Therefore, do not let sin reign over your mortal body that you should what? That you should obey it and its lust there. That means it's your God. Don't let it reign over you. That of your mortal, but but that it should obey his love. But 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 loose yourself. But what? Declare yourself dead to sin, but alive to God. Now I'm closing with this. So so he says, have that image. How do I stay? How do I stay? How do I stay sane? How do I stay sane without losing my mind over the things going on in the world and going on in my life? Do what do what Peter said in verse thirteen of First Peter one. Keep an image of Christ inside of you. Remember that holy day. And, and you know what? You remember that holy day. Remember when you when you stood before God and, and how holy, how clean and how holy you felt. And you know what you should be trying to do, Gina? Try, always trying to get back to that day. Yeah. Oh, oh, y'all didn't hear me. Always trying to get back to that day. Y'all think that's just me making that up, but it actually says in uh, Romans fourteen verse eleven. It says, "And do this: know the time that it is high time that you wake up out of your sleep." And that your salvation is closer to you than when? Than when you first believed. So your salvation keeps coming back to you. As long as you keep that image inside of you, your salvation keeps coming back to you. Then it says in verse 14, and I close. As obedient children, not conforming yourself to the former lust as in your own ignorance. Don't go back to your old ways. Don't go back to the old side, of the old person of you. Galatians chapter 5. How does that go, Holy Ghost? Galatians 5, 1 says, do not, do not be entangled again with the yoke of bondage where once you were being we're entangled in, where he made you free. Don't let it tangle you back up. Keep your hands to the plow and keep looking forward. Keep your hands to the plow and keep looking forward. Keep fighting. Keep fighting the good fight of faith. And you know what? If you'll do it, you do it. When you get to the other side, you'll shuck it off, man. You'll shuck the flesh off into the fire and you'll move on. And you, and you know, and you know what? You know what'll happen? You know what'll happen? Right? You're gonna say something when you're barely, and I'm done. Yeah. You know what? What you were talking about holding the plow? Okay. I was trying to remember a verse. I think it was Lot. Was it Lot's wife that looked back? Look back. What's supposed to? Lot. You know what? You know what she did? She, they, they were coming out of Sodom and Gomorrah, one of the most one of the most evil uh, cities of all time. But you know what? We're more evil than they are today. The Bible said that in the days that we live in, did y'all know that says Sodom and Gomorrah and Nineveh will repent in our day? That's what we've lost. We, we, we have no repentance in our days that we live in. But yeah, you know what she looked at? I, I, I often wondered what she saw, Kenneth. But now I did, but I know now. When she looked back, she became a pillar of salt. What she saw, what did the Bible say? What did God tell Moses that when Moses what did Moses want to do with God when he was at the cleft of the rock? What did he want to see? The face of God, right? What did God tell Moses? No man can see God's face and live. Isn't that what he said? Well, she looked back, and you know what it was? It was the wrath of God that was pouring down on Sodom and Gomorrah. And she saw the face of God, and when she did, she became a pillar of salt. Y'all with me? See, there's a fearful thing. The Bible says you want God to be on your side. It's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. If you let, but if you, if you let God lead you, and you hold your hand to the plow, and you don't, you know, don't worry about what's behind you. You know why you don't have to worry about what's behind, you know why you don't have to worry about what's behind you. Because the word says this in Philippians 13. Philippians 3, around verse 12, 13. It says his righteousness goes before us and his glory is our rear guard. See, so God shields you. You don't have to turn around and look. The glory of God is, is around. I, I can see it on y'all right now. The glory of the Lord is surrounding you. The glory of the Lord is all around y'all. You, you don't have to worry about your enemies. God's, God's guarding you and shielding you. All you got to do is just, you know what, you know what, you know what, you know what, I'm going to say this and be done. You know all God wants out of y'all? His desire to be holy like him. If you go read the rest of that verse here, it says, be ye holy even as I am. For God is holy, be ye holy even as I am. If you desire to be holy, God will make you holy. Amen. God will make you holy. Hold fast. God will change, God will change the direction for you. And once you get established in his, you, you go through a little suffering. 
I was going to finish that in that first Peter 5. It says, after you've suffered a little while, your, your flesh is going to suffer a little bit. But once you get established, once you figure out how God works, and once you, once you figure the plan and you get established, guess what? You'll be settled. You'll be settled. You'll be settled. you say, you know what? God's got me in control. I'm going to keep following him. I'm going to keep looking easy off and finish my faith. Amen? Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, thank you, Holy Ghost, for anointing me. Thank you for the word. Thank you for the power of the Holy Spirit. Thank you for your glory that is on them today, God. And your anointing that breaks every yoke and sets the captive free. Him that the Lord makes free is free indeed. And so, Father, I, I feel I'm going to do this. I'm going to tell Kenneth to go ahead and turn off that, uh, turn off the, the recording. Let's push the button, Kenneth. Just turn it in. And I feel 